Here we go. Crystal structure of an LSD-bound serotonin receptor. And it is authored by, first author, Daniel Wacker, and it's out of Brian Roth's lab. But it essentially goes through what the serotonin 2A or 2C receptor? They actually, so they actually in this paper, they used the serotonin 2B um, receptor. And I, I'm not exactly sure. The, the basic reason is that at first they couldn't get the 2A um, receptor to crystallize with the LSD in it. That paper is actually going to come out this year, I've been notified. Um, got the inside scoop. But they did the, they, yeah, the 2B they chose to do because um, basically the sequence homology of the receptor is very similar and they could get it to crystallize. So they think what happens in the 2B crystal um, structure would happen in the 2A, but that'll be, um, that'll, we'll be notified of that once that paper comes out. So it's interesting that LSD and I guess most psychedelics, they activate their agonists of a variety of serotonin receptors, subtypes, uh, 5-HT. Uh, I think it's an agonist of the 5-HT1A as well, in addition to 2B, 2C. Yeah, it is. the. If you look at all the affinity stuff, the affinity is the highest at the 2A. There's a lot of papers that do um, receptor affinity, which is how tightly the drug binds to a specific receptor. And it is the highest at the 2A. Um, 2B, 2C are like pretty high, but then after that, it drops off a lot. There are even affinities that like dopamine receptors, but they're, they're pretty low. Interesting. Okay. And, and I guess what is the subtype that's responsible for the psychedelic effects? We think it's 2A. That's what we seem to think. I don't know how much that can actually be supported, but that's what it seems like. So basically in the paper, what they, the, out, the objective was is to take the LSD molecule, uh, bind it to the receptor, crystallize it, and see what's going on with the drug bound uh, to the receptor. And the, the biggest things you'll see across like what I noticed in the paper is that if you pull up, I have some of these pictures of binding, the pictures that I submitted to you that, uh, so, so basically what's going on in those images is, um, what they found in the crystal structure when you bind LSD to it, there are these two really strong hydrogen bonds that occur. Um, there's one on the left. So basically their LSD has an indole structure. There's an NH group in it. Um, and there's also a tertiary nitrogen in it. And the, the uh, tertiary nitrogen on that, I think it'd be the left-hand side of the picture, has a hydrogen bond with aspartic acid 135. And there's also a hydrogen bond with... Um, glycine 221 of the indole part of LSD. And they found that that's actually pretty common among a lot of psychedelics is um, the aspartic acid glycine 221. And if you actually look at what's interesting, also uh, psilocin from psychedelic mushrooms, yep. um, it has a similar structure to where it also has a hydrogen bond with aspartic acid 135 and glycine 221. But what's interesting is if you pull up the there's a mescaline photo on there I have. Mescaline is another this one. Yeah. Probably I can't see it, but it has it says mescaline and um psilocin, I think. Yep, yep, mescaline's up there. But what's what's interesting is um people don't know how mescaline sits inside the receptor, which is another pretty powerful psychedelic at the serotonin to a receptor. Structurally it's it's very different from LSD and psilocin. But I, I mean, I put it inside the receptor myself to see if I could figure out, you know, where it binds. But there's actually no, there's no data that supports where it binds to on the receptor. Mm. But so, that's, that's another whole thing. But, you know, basically in the paper, what they did was they were looking at key structural features that happen when you bind LSD to, to the receptor. They also found this um, interesting lid. So leucine 229, I don't have a picture of it, but it's another amino acid that when LSD binds to it in the receptor, it kind of closes the top of the receptor like a lid and it forces the drug to stay inside the receptor, which they want to see if you mutated that amino acid, would the, would the drug get kicked out of the receptor a lot faster? And so what they did was they took that, that leucine to to an alanine and they think they're way faster if you mutate that amino acid suggesting that you know leucine 229 is very important for lsd's really long lasting effects it acts like a trap door forcing you to stay inside the receptor and it like doesn't let it go just keeps it in there okay 
I remember when the news articles first came out about this this paper, and they and they were saying that LSD clips in or hooks into the to the receptor in such a way, just like that, like a trap door, in the sense that now it's almost wedged in there and it's very difficult to to get out. And that may mm. be one of the reasons that uh, individuals that take LSD go. Uh, they, they use it, whereas other psychedelics, you may experience much of a wave-like effect. LSD, you end up getting a very much a prolonged, um, pr- you know, high at that. So there's not, there's, ve- there's very little variation in the intensity of the high over time. Yeah. yeah I guess what you, you generally notice in trend profiles of psychedelics is you see about a pretty strong spike in, you know, the, the peak concentration occurs at like two, at two, two and a half hours in. And that concentration in your blood stays really high until like five, six hours, and then it drops. But with like psychedelics like mushrooms, you don't have that prolonged experience of a longer high because you don't have that leucine, you don't have that leucine 229 trapdoor type thing. You don't see them stacking as much. 